I really love Stranger Things. It's a beautifully shot, expertly written show, and the acting is amazing considering the fact that most of the cast are child actors. Stranger Things is a horror show inspired by Stephen King, or so that's what it seems to be at first. The show tends to shift a lot in which genre it's trying to portray, which in most cases would be a bad thing. But here it feels natural. It doesn't feel like we're jumped to a different show when it goes from a scary horror mystery to a teen drama. It feels like every piece fits to make the show what it is, and it's amazing what the Duffer Brothers managed to create. Stranger Things does have a Stephen King vibe throughout. The episodes are called Chapters, which is a nice little touch to it, and it definitely keeps the horror aspects up. Season 2 increases the shock value by adding more gore and grotesque imagery, while Season 1 is the most terrifying season because the upside down is the unknown. We don't know about it, we don't know what a Demogorgon is, we don't know what it wants, causing a more horror-esque feeling because it's based on mystery. Season 2 had to put up with this and it did create a compelling story but mostly relied on jump scares and blood to convey the horror aspect, and Season 3 didn't pull off anything too scary. <sighs> Throughout the show, we also get a supernatural feeling. There's also a buddy cop sort of thing happening with Steven Dustin around the middle of season two, and I love it. The show tends to do this a lot, but it never feels out of place, and that's mostly because of the characters. Every one of the characters are great, and the acting is incredibly done. We have amazing character moments like the castle buyer scene or Hopper's Note to Eleven, which never fails to make me cry. Dustin and Steve play off each other in such a way that it shouldn't even be possible for this friendship to work, yet it does. Steve seems like the bullying jerk throughout the beginning of season 1, but as the season progresses, we get more character moments for him, and we get a more three-dimensional character. Throughout season 2, we get to see him deal with a lot of things, and we get to see his true personality. Pairing him up with Dustin and having them play off each other was a great decision. It advanced both their characters tremendously well. Then we get Robin by season 3, and she doesn't feel like the writers are cramming more characters in for no reason. She's a really great addition to the group and gets her own character moments that not only advance her character, but also Steve's, especially in the bathroom scene. I think it's because I found someone who's a little bit better for me. <laughs> it's crazy. Will gets some incredible moments as well. His interactions with nearly everyone feel real, and he is sort of the center of the show, at least in the first two seasons, because he's the one that's connected to the Upside Down more than anyone else, meaning that the creatures from the Upside Down will continue to haunt him, and I find that really interesting, although it definitely feels like he's wasted in season three. But even then, he has some great moments in that season, like the D&D scene, or again, the Castle Buyer scene. Hopper has a lot of great things going for him. He's the classic 80s town cop and there's a mystery in town. But unlike many tropes, Hopper investigates. His art comes full circle by the end and when he died, it felt like that was the end of the show. Which apparently, it's not. And don't get me wrong, I can't wait for season 4, but season 3 felt like an ending, and a great ending at that. But through everything, Hopper faces the upside down and learns to love some people, let go of his trauma and finally advance through life, until his inevitable death. Eleven is the supernatural aspect of the show, and she has great development from being a strange child in the forest with powers to being a friend and finally moving away from Hawkins after everything she's gone through, without her powers. Which is probably why I love the final scene and would have loved for that to be the ending. Watching these characters leave the buyer's house, the house that has experienced a demogorgon in its walls, a possessed will having the mind flare extracted, or a bunch of demodogs getting tossed away by Eleven, who has returned to her friends. The house that has been there for all three seasons. As we watch Joyce look at it one last time, we see Jonathan, Will, and Eleven leaving with her. And all of this whilst Eleven is reading Hopper's note to her. It's just beautiful. <laughs> Season 1's story is simple. Will Byers is missing, so everyone tries to find him, but they're dealing with something more powerful than they think. It's a simple plot, but it works, not to mention the show throws many plot twists that are unexpected every time. The first one coming from the fact that Will might be dead, and the second being Will isn't dead. Do you see what I mean by Will being the center of the show? The plot twists are effective because we have no idea what the Upside Down is. We are in the dark, so the first time we see the Demogorgon, it is scary because we don't know about it. We don't know where it comes from or what it wants. We just know it has Will, it killed Barb, it's a threat. These are the same reasons Eleven is so interesting. 
We have no idea where she came from before the lab. We don't know if she was perhaps made in the lab or anything else, which is why it's so interesting. Because it's a mystery. The show also has these really heartwarming moments and interactions between the characters that feel real. It feels like Dustin, Luca, and Mike are friends. I didn't include Will because he was stuck in the Upside Down for most of the season. We get to see the group become friends with Eleven and then tear apart because of her. The characters get development so that we care, so that we can root for them. I also love how they still feel like middle schoolers from the 80s. They have these little fun jokes like that X-Men comic gag. Get back here! I'm gonna kill you! I'll take your X-Men 134! Or the fact that both monsters of the show are named after Dungeons and Dragons characters. The wolf, it was a seven. The Demogorgon, it got me. The season ends on a really high note, and I felt satisfied beyond belief. It's funny, it's scary, the characters feel real, the writing is beautiful, Stranger Things season one is perfect. I can't stress how much I love season one of Stranger Things. Let me get this straight. I don't hate season two of Stranger Things. I don't even dislike it. In fact, I think it's great. Sure, it isn't as good as seasons one or three, and it definitely has some flaws, but it's still a really solid season that I still think is faithful to the first season and a great second chapter of the show. I'm gonna get another thing straight. I don't think the show has fallen over the years. There are more flaws in the later seasons, but I still love the show so much. With that said, let's jump straight into season two. Stranger Things season two starts off really great. It still feels like the first season. It adds two new characters right from the get-go, Max and Billy, and introduces a new monster that definitely felt a bit overused by season three. But the fact that we know about the Upside Down removes a bit of the horror aspect. Now that we know where these monsters come from, the mysterious aspect of the show is gone. Actually, never mind. The first few episodes have a great mystery story and have a lot of tension because we actually don't know what the Mind Flayer is capable of. But after the first few episodes, things start to come together, leaving the horror aspect to the effects, which are still great. Stranger Things has a lot of practical effects, which makes things like the Demogorgon and the Demodogs feel real because they are actually real. Sort of like how Jurassic Park operated. The CG in season 3 looks great, but the fact that there are barely any practical effects removes a bit of the realism. And knowing what these people had to go through to create these effects makes rewatching the show a whole lot funner. Not to say that rewatching the show is ever a burden. The character interactions are still great, especially the newfound and absolutely godlike duo of Steve and Dustin. But as I said before, it has some flaws. Mike, one of the main characters of the show, barely does anything, as well as Luca. It feels like they're just there because they were in the first season. Then there's Eleven's entire plot line. The show introduces this new character called Eight, who is basically from the same lab as Eleven, so they're like sisters. The entire storyline was completely forgotten by the writers in season three, or maybe they just decided it wasn't canon anymore because it was really bad. The entire episode with Eight was a mess, and it just ends like that, and we never get anything else about it. It builds up this plotline so slowly that by the time I got to the episode with Eight, I had forgotten she existed. They introduce her a bit in the first episode of the season, but then they don't show her again until the moment Eleven meets her. It feels like the writers were just trying to find something for Eleven to do other than be Hopper's newfound daughter, and they didn't want to sideline another one of their main characters, but it still feels like they did. <laughs> Stranger Things 3 is insane. There are Soviets trying to get into the Upside Down, so four kids decide to infiltrate their secret underground lair that's under a mall. Then the Mind Flayer makes a new body out of rats that have exploded, and there's also a Russian Arnold Schwarzenegger trying to kill Hopper and Joyce. Stranger Things 3 is so crazy, and I love it. The characters have some of the greatest moments in the show, like, again, the castle buyer scene and the bathroom scene. The comedy here is really funny, like the brilliantly executed never-ending story scene, or basically any moment where Dustin, Steve, and Robin interact. It isn't gonna work, Dingus. Oh, really? Step back. No. Seriously. No! So if you die, I die. Okay. When looking back on the season, I can definitely pinpoint problems in the narrative. Robin, Steve, and Dustin's plotline doesn't really make a lot of sense despite being the most entertaining plotline. 
It's a fun plotline to sit down and enjoy, mostly because of Robin, Steve, and Dustin. Erica doesn't really feel necessary, but she's still a pretty fine character. The show also feels like it's pushing way too hard on Hopper and Joyce's romance, and the magic of the practical effects just isn't really there with the CG rat mind flayer, as well as the whole plot line about the flayed feeling a bit wasted. They used it pretty well and all, but I feel like the flayed could have had more potential to be like a Walking Dead type thing where they just expand more and more and slowly take over Hawkins. I guess they kind of did it, but not to the extent I thought it would go. But enough about the bad stuff. The season is great. It packs an emotional punch to the gut with that ending, and it plays out really well. It gives us time to connect with the characters like Alexi so that we feel something when he eventually dies. Did I give a spoiler warning? I don't think I did. Oh well, I'll just pin a comment saying there are spoilers. Something I never expected to happen was me actually feeling sad when Billy died. He was a horrible person throughout both seasons he was in, but that minute of redemption paid off. That's how great the Duffers wrote the characters in the show. Stranger Things has many genres that bear different tones, but it never feels off. It feels like one coherent show, and I would have been more than happy with season three's beautiful ending. I'm excited for Stranger Things 4, and I am going to talk about it when it drops, but until now, I'm perfectly content with three fun seasons of a great show. Oh, and happy Halloween. Yeah.